Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dev here, and today I've got a very exciting video for you guys. We are going to be taking a look at the various AI plugin for SketchUp, and I'm going to show you how you can take such a simple scene like this and create images like this rendered through AI. So here you can see all I had for my input was that SketchUp scene, and all of this is renders from various AI. It's quite a useful plugin, and in general, I think combining it with SketchUp AI renders with simplistic modeling, you're going to have some very exciting outputs. So yeah, if you guys do enjoy this video, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like and let's get into it. Okay, so when it comes to getting started with Virus, I'm gonna link this page in the description below. But here, as you can see, Virus now officially supports SketchUp, which is great. Um, one reason why I'm really excited about this is because in SketchUp, you normally do a lot of early stage massing, you know, a lot of early stage forms because it's so easy to use. But if you wanna see the true potential of that geometry or what you want in your site, maybe as a quick image, you can of course Photoshop it or add additional detail to maybe render it with Enscape or V-Ray. But now, because we can generate quick outputs using Virus and we're using or developing models quickly with SketchUp, I think these two paired together are super powerful, right? As I've shown you in the intro, what with what you input as a simple mass and what you can get is absolutely incredible. So in order to download Virus, you just have to hit download here. There is a pro feature of this plugin which allows you to end up generating um, multiple images at one time and increasing your resolution so you actually do have a lot better outputs. In general here you can see various or SketchUp. Um, in terms of the price for this plugin, it's currently at $50 per month if you buy it on a monthly rolling basis or $35 per month if you buy it for the year. And in general, I'm also going to include this link in the description. They've given a quick guide on how to get started with various for SketchUp. So stuff you need to make sure your view settings have and in general, a few examples they go through, which is super useful. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to see you in SketchUp. Okay, so for our first example, we're going to be looking at this AutoCAD to SketchUp completed flat work um, file by Daniel Tal. I'm going to link it in the description as I mentioned before. But I think this is a good um, test for various because from SketchUp, normally what you guys would probably do or how you start a project is probably through simple masses, right? This is probably one of the best reasons to use SketchUp compared to something like um, Revit later on when you're dealing with the detailed design. So here you can see we've got a simple mass for the towers over here and a simple um, landscape design. So first thing we want to do is launch Virus. If you don't have this icon here, that's for Virus. What you can do is you can go to extensions and then go to Evolve Lab Virus. So once you have various loaded, one thing I want to explain is the settings. So let's say here that you don't like um, the view here. This is the view that Virus is actually going to use in order to start generating the images. So if I click on scene one here in SketchUp, we can see that I've gotten to a much better camera angle, I feel. So I can just click on this little arrow here that's a, and it's going to make us refresh our SketchUp preview. So once I click on that, here we can see our update. We can see our preview in Virus has updated and this is now the image we're going to start using. In terms of the parameters here, we've got a few sliders for creativity strength, style strength, width, and number of renderings. The two main ones you're going to deal with is creativity strength. If you highlight over it, you can see it says this is the amount of the image that's replaced by the algorithm. So over here, if I make all of this lower, it's going to focus on what we see here in terms of our image to try constrain it to our geometry. You may think this is good, but the way Virus works is you actually need to allow it to have some creativity strength in order to start differentiating from this image I found. So you want this to be a sort of relatively high value, at least when this gets to the darker blue mark. Style strength here is how much this um, algorithm is going to respect the text prompt or how much lower values are going to respect the kind of a more traditional render. So here, as you can see, when we start inputting stuff such as our user prompt, we're basically saying, hey, do you want to focus more on what we have here as text? or more in terms of a realistic render based on what's viewed here. Width and number of renderings, these are things you can only edit once you're on the um, pro license. So I've currently got a pro license. So here I can start generating two or three, up to four images um, per kind of render that I do. And width, I can increase to increase the resolution. Like I said, these are pro features, but for now we're gonna focus on these settings here. So I'm gonna use two renders and the maximum width so I can get a decent resolution. And over here for my first um, text prompt, I've actually got one written down just because I thought it works quite well and saves some time. So here I'm just going to show you what I've written. So in terms of a user prompt, here I've written, um, what's it called? Hi a hyper-realistic rendering of a series of individual houses surrounded by communal gardens, landscape design with communal stone paths, tall grass, a red brick facade. And I want you guys to keep this in mind here with large windows, sunny weather, and a green field background and a green field in background with the trees okay so over here i'm just going to leave the normal settings that i have on and then we're going to start adjusting them but let's hit render and see what we get 
Okay, so now that I've got my renders, I'm just going to expand this and show you guys something. So over here, even though I've written the word red brick facade, you can see here it's made this wall red brick. That's because the SketchUp material is also red brick. I don't exactly have to apply a um, brick material to this um, houses, but as long as it's red or it's kind of got the tone of a brick, then various can know to read what's in the image. So over here, I am actually just going to select all these houses over here. And then I'm going to apply the material here. Uh, let's go to brick and cladding and let's apply this material. And now if I apply it to all these houses here, and if I go back to various, so if I click on this eye here, you can see it says show SketchUp preview. Here, this is the preview of what SketchUp sees or what various sees from SketchUp that was last loaded. I haven't actually updated the red brick pattern. So now I need to click on this refresh icon here. Now I've loaded my material and now if I hit render, it should work. Okay, so here my images are loaded. And again, this is used in the um, basic uh, values that Virus gives by default. And here you can see I've got two images that are generated, right? I This is one of the good features about using the pro features just because from the same input, you can see I've got two kind of different quality of images. This one is much better, I feel. But from this input, you can see what I've got, right? Like how amazing is that in terms of these are simple masses. I haven't even drawn the windows there and I've just said, hey, can you put large windows on the facade? Of course, these aren't accurate. But look, it's generated for us. And in general, I feel like I can be a bit more descriptive with my scene. And I want to play with these values here to show you what I get. So here, I'm going to make creativity strength go up to 75. And same with my style strength. So let's use this to actually, you know, focus a bit more on our user prompt here. And this time, I'm going to click on... Uh, this time, I'm going to use the uh, user uh, prompt of hyper realistic rendering of individual houses surrounded by a communal garden, landscape design of a communal stone path, um, a lake of water here flower bushes, tall um, tall grass, a red brick facade with large windows, sunny weather, and green filled trees. Here you can see I've actually got additional options, right? So here we can say, is it an interior scene? Turbo nature, which I'm gonna click, because if we highlight over it, if we highlight over this, you can see it says, enable this to add much vegetation as possible, which I think will be nice for this scene. Atmospheric, this is gonna make it more foggy and misty. I don't really want that for this view, and this area of view, yes or no. So for this one, I'm just gonna hit yes, render, and let's see what we get. Okay, so this is the render. As you can see, the materials aren't as we expected. It's actually make it timber. But if I go back to my previous one that was generated, we can see we've actually got brick here. And it's a complete different render to the one that we've got before. So here, when I said, you know, um, large uh, windows, it's actually made them very large, like the size of the um, building. So in this case, it might be better to actually draw a bit of geometry to represent windows. But as you can see, as we cycle through our pump, it cycle it through us. And here we can see everything we've got from this, right? Um, it's actually blending the path here, which is a bit unfortunate, but overall compared to what we've inputted and what we've got So if I click on this uh, eye here as we can see show SketchUp preview There we go We can cycle through what we've got in our SketchUp scene and what various has generated for us same for this image There we go We can see that all of this has been generated from AI and I think that's pretty amazing Okay, so one last one out of curiosity is if we just move the camera a bit Let's try go. I don't know something like here Fantastic. Well, actually, if I want to make these all timber or wood, let's see what we get for our facade, right? So here, I'm just going to make this uh, modern sliding. There we go. All this has been updated. And now if I go back to my various um, scene here, if I do hyper-realistic, and let's just say that we want, instead of a red brick facade, timber facade okay with large windows or well, let's do um yeah let's just do timber facade and see what we get so once i hit render here fantastic so we've got this and actually i keep forgetting to do this unfortunately but if i hit show revit preview you can see i've still got my brick material applied so even though i didn't change it from brick to um, timber because the brick material is like a timber shade as well, in terms of just raw color, in terms of excluding pattern. You can see Virus can actually use this to recognize we can switch from brick to timber easily, right? So I didn't even need to change that in SketchUp. All I needed was to assign a true color. So here you can see from one thing I've got brick and over here I've got timber. And in terms of my SketchUp view, this is what we see. So in terms of our input as really simple masses and what we've got from Virus, I think this is really good for early stage design, right? Okay, so for this next example, we're going to be looking at something with a bit more detail. So as you can see here, we've got this file. This is actually the parametric design one that's by Leo N. 
Um, I think it's by the GP Creative Design Studio. As you can see from this description here, it will be linked as I mentioned before. But here we can see that we've got a detailed facade. The interior isn't really that, um, what's it called? It, there isn't really much of an interior. So we're gonna see what Various generates. Overall, it's got a bit of an organic form. It's quite simple. Let's see what we can get from Various in this scene. So if I go to extensions again and launch Various, here I'm gonna use the basic settings to start with as before, but I'm just gonna increase the width and number of renderings. And in terms of my prompt here, I've actually written something out previously. Um, just to make it easier. So this one, I'm going to say it's a render of a cafe with a glass curtain wall facade, black steel frame, mullions, a curved roof in a black metallic material. We're going to see how it picks this up here because it isn't actually black, but we're going to see what it does here. It's a sunny afternoon and the background is a field of green grass with trees. So let's also turn, actually let's leave Turbo Nature off for now and let's see what we get initially off the bat. So I'm going to hit render. And off the bat, the first two images that I've got are actually pretty decent. So if I just minimize this here, or let me just make it a bit smaller. Here we can see our original genome, our original geometry, right? And then if I go through left, this is the first one that was generated. Okay, maybe not the best in terms of it was getting a bit confused with the roof. But the same prompt in terms of if we just generate it again. Again, number of renderings were two. The second one's a lot more convincing in terms of the form that it took, right? Overall, you can see it's getting a bit confused between the uh, mullions and where everything's heading. But... For a quick concept render, this is decent. Now let me try to tweak the settings and let's do style strength 70 and let's make this a bit lower. And let's turn on Turbo Nature and see what we get. So if I hit render again, let's see. Okay, so these are the last two images that we got. I'm gonna be honest, I mean, the sky does look quite cool, but I don't think um, these settings were the best. The first ones were a lot better from what I've seen. So if I push creativity strength down now, so we're actually following a lot more what's in our model, and if we do style strength, again, let's highlight over it. We're going to see lower values are going to respect the prompt, whereas the higher numbers are going to have more photographic quality. So if we do style strength up and creativity strength, let's do something like, I don't know, 40. Let's hit render and see what we get for this example. Okay, so as you can see, the results that what we got from the beginning to now what we see now is just when creativity strength and style strength is set, if either of them are set to low, I feel like this example isn't working. So again, if we made something like this 90 and style strength, I don't know, let's make it something like 60. Last time, let's see what we get for this output. Overall, I think the last image that was generated is quite spot on in terms of how well it follows the geometry. One thing to note though, is like I mentioned before, all of this stuff, whenever you do creativity strength or either style strength down low, I feel like it just makes the aesthetic way too similar to SketchUp and I'm not a fan of it. So I feel like for when you do use various, maybe particularly in SketchUp, you do need creativity and style strength up quite high. But in general, for the last two images, especially the last one, I think that's quite spot on in terms of what you'd expect that to see in terms of our prompt, right? So it's in a field here, and we've said use it a black metallic roof and black mullions. Of course, the geometry isn't perfect here, but overall for a quick AI render, it's great. So this, this is the ones that we started with, and this is what we've gone through, and this is what we've ended with. And there you guys have it, our first look at Various AI for SketchUp. Um, in general, I'm very impressed with it. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of Various. And the main reason I looked at these two examples um, and the fact they were simple masses is because this is what people mainly use SketchUp for, right? I know people use it above and beyond at some places, but in general, most people, they use SketchUp for simple masses to see what the potential is of the site. And using Various, without getting too into the model in terms of detailing some things, you can create pretty decent renders, see what the facade will be like in terms of the overall um, concept. And you actually have a, pre a pretty decent output from a very simple model or an image input. Um, the main reason why I didn't actually also use an interior example is because personally, I want to focus on the more simplistic side. If you, if you were gonna use an interior, I feel like you'd probably model it um, a bit more and you'd probably be using something like Enscape or V-Ray. But if you guys do want a video where I show you how to use um, SketchUp for interior renders with Virus, let me know down below in the comments. If you guys did enjoy this video, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like. And yeah, that's it. Take care, guys. Cheers.